Hi, this is Dr. Eckhart. Um, thank you for coming. Previously, we had talked about the safety of natural progesterone as well as the side effects of natural progesterone. And today, uh, we're going to talk about topical versus oral progesterone and go over the times when you have to do hormone testing and what hormone testing is good for. Okay, so in review, um, let's, let's just review this again. Um, anything on the skin is 10 times in potency as the oral dose. And again, this is because, um, again, the, the liver, if you took it orally, the liver would 90% inactivate whatever is put in the mouth. So a 20 milligram topical dose of progesterone on the skin is the same as a 200 milligram oral dose. So when you eat 200 milligrams of progesterone, the liver inactivates 90% of it or 180 milligrams and um, all you get is 20. So 20 milligrams topically is the same as 200 milligrams orally. You also have to remember that 200 milligrams rectally or vaginally is the same as 20 milligrams topically. And this is because the rectal area and the vaginal area is drained by the portal vein and the portal vein is again goes straight to the liver and it's 90 percent inactivated. Um, this is extremely important if you're trying to use progesterone to prevent a miscarriage you need at least 60 milligrams of topical progesterone to prevent a miscarriage, but you would need about 600 milligrams orally, rectally, or vaginally. So if you use too little, it will not prevent the miscarriage. So again, taking orally liver first pass activates 90% of the progesterone. Um, those 90% metabolites, we kind of don't know what they do. I'm sure somebody knows, um, but I have not seen it in the literature. Maybe I just couldn't find it. But the 180 milligrams that, that are metabolized, we don't know what they do, but it makes you sleepy. So I did have one woman um, where she was on 200 milligrams of oral progesterone, and she drove to Walmart, and she couldn't drive home because she was too sleepy. So um, be careful when you take oral progesterone. Uh, it can make you extremely sleepy. You know, when you wake up late at night and you go to the bathroom, make sure you don't slip and fall um, because the oral progesterone can make you very sleepy. So once again, the take-home message is that for avoidance of xenoestrogens and these endocrine disruptors, hormone disruptors, the skin is much more important than the, what you take orally. So I have a number of uh, single mothers and the single mothers, um, you know, they don't have enough money for organic food. So I just say, forget the organic food. Just pay attention to the laundry and soap, shampoo, and lotions that you put on the skin. You'll be fine. And typically, um, the women who have these conditions, um, if they're able to change the things on their skin, uh, they're just fine. They do great. Uh, they get well. And so the question is, uh, why do we hormone test? And let's talk about hormone testing right now. And so the question is, is like, there's usually hormone tests for estradiol, estrone, estriol, and progesterone, and even cortisol and testosterone. Uh, but the hormone testing does not, does not test for xenoestrogens like lavender and coffee. Uh, once again, um, if you went back to Block, MD, pediatric endocrinologist at the, at the first, uh, sets of slides that we, we showed. He tested that his boys, the five young boys with man boobs or gynecomastia, he tested their internal hormones or endogenous hormones, their own native hormones, and they were normal. Okay, Coffee is kind of weird. It will actually increase estradiol, but at the same time it actually is a, a, a phytoestrogen in its own right as well. So coffee increases estradiol, but it also is a um, from what I understand, it's a phytoestrogen itself. So hormone testing does not test for things like lavender. So in other words, um, you, the lavender can be causing man boobs, and your hormone test will come out normal. Okay, because the hormone test only tests for estradiol, estrone, estrel, and progesterone. It does not test for lavender. So. What I found out early on, 10 years ago, is many, time the, many times the woman is sick and has normal hormone tests. So the woman will come up and say, well, I have tender breasts, and um, I'm, I, I have mag, you know, chocolate craving, and I have bloating and breast tenderness. And then you do the hormone test, and it's normal. 
And it's like, why am I doing the hormone test? Because the hormone test doesn't measure whether she's using lavender soap. So so if I went up to a lab and said, can I measure lavender? They'll go, no, we don't have a test for lavender. We can't measure lavender. So what's the easiest way to find out if she is having lavender in her blood? Well, the easiest way is go, well, are you using lavender soap? Or is lavender in your shampoo? The, the easiest thing to do is just read the label. But I cannot find out whether a woman is taking lavender by looking at the hormone test because the hormone test does not measure lavender. So as a matter of fact hormone testing does not help for most patients because most patients are sick from environmental estrogens and they're not sick from their own hormones. If however you do measure estradiol and it is elevated the question is um, well why is your estradiol elevated? Now you could use a fancy prescription drug called an aromatase inhibitor and that would prevent the, the, the uh, synthesis of estradiol. But a much easier way is to find out why the estradiol is high. Now there are several different foods and chemicals that can cause your estradiol to go high. One of those is coffee. Again, um, from the earlier slides, if you've been listening to all these, you found out that uh, the Brigham Young University study found that a couple cups of coffee a day will increase your estradiol 70%. Okay, and there's also a couple other foods, which is in our booklet that we sent out with our product, that can also elevate estradiol. So, I, I instead of measuring their hormones of estradiol, I just simply ask, are you drinking coffee? If so, please stop. This is really hurting you. Don't drink coffee. It's increasing your estradiol. It's making your disease worse. So if you want to learn more about that, read hormoneimbalance.com. So when is it? When would you hormone test? Uh, when do you think it would be a good idea to hormone test? Well, less than 1% of the patients do not absorb progesterone well through the skin. And uh, in those patients, they don't feel anything, better or worse. So if I give progesterone to a patient and they say, well, I feel great, well, then I know the progesterone is being absorbed into the body. Or the patient puts the progesterone cream on and they say, I feel worse. Well, then I know that the progesterone being is a being absorbed into the body and that she's undergoing this paradoxical effect and it's making, it's waking up the estrogen receptors and um, it, it, it seems that she's getting even more estrogen. So she may have an increased headache, increased bloating, increased breast tenderness. Okay, and for those patients who are better or worse taking progesterone, obviously they're absorbing progesterone. So absorption is not a problem. But less than 1% of the patients do not absorb progesterone well through the skin. So in those patients, I usually use a saliva test. Okay, and it's important not to use a blood test. The blood test will always come out that the topical progesterone is not being absorbed. Now obviously oil and water don't mix. So when you put topical natural progesterone, again the progesterone is in the oil fraction of the cream, not the water fraction. And um, the progesterone is absorbed into the body and into the oil fraction of the blood. So it's on, it's on the white blood cell membranes and it's floating on the chylomicrons, the little droplets of oil in the blood. The progesterone topically put onto the skin is not in the water fraction of the, of the blood. The water fraction of the blood has a binding protein that makes progesterone water soluble. So again, progesterone is in the oil fraction of, the, of, of whatever, in, in the cream, or it's in the oil fraction of your blood, in the chylomicrons and in the white, red blood cell membranes, and it's not, or it's in the subcutaneous fat, it is not in the water portion of your blood. So if you do a blood test and looking for a natural progesterone, topically, the topical natural progesterone that you put on your skin, you are not going to find it. When you run a blood test, the only thing that you'll find is the patient's own natural progesterone, the endogenous hormones that the patient it's herself makes. So a blood test te testing for topical natural progesterone absorption is useless. You have to use a saliva test. Do not use a blood test to match to, to measure natural progesterone topically. It will not work. So again, uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, I, I would enjoy your comments if you put um, comments onto the screen or uh, below YouTube. Um, 
And uh, thank you very much for coming for Women's Therapeutic Institute. Once again, if you order any of our products, you'll get a booklet of to avoid xenoestrogens for free that comes with your product. And please feel free to read our testimonies on our website. Again, thank you for coming, and um, we couldn't do it without you. <laughs>